Good evening, this is Doris Kenyon, and welcome to Trailers from Hell. Veteran stage actor George Arliss was one of the biggest movie stars of the early talkie era, though he's now forgotten except by us hardcore types. But the image most people do have of him is of a man who starred in a series of biopics, often featuring him declaiming his dialogue with a finger raised in the air. He even played Alexander Hamilton, even though he was 63, playing a guy in his 20s. Unless he was a white guy who didn't rap. But Arliss was nothing if not a shrewd cookie, so he alternated the historical dramas with domestic comedies, usually as an old dude showing those young whippersnappers that they're not as clever as they think they are. And arguably the best of them is The Working Man, which is actually a remake of one of his silent films, $20 a Week, which co-starred a young Ronald Coleman. In this one, he decides that the spoiled children of a recently deceased friend need a lesson on how to run the old man's business. And he's just the guy to throw them into the lake and expect them to swim. While he's off fishing, of course. Geez, enough of the stills and copy already. Let's get to some actual scenes. There's one thing that never changes. Every single generation thinks its kids are a bunch of layabouts who will never amount to a red cent. Better go to Europe, had I? <laughs> Youth at the helm, eh? I'll show him. Lead your filthy life and drag your sister down with you. And don't worry about me, I'm going. I resign my trusteeship. I wash my hands of the party. Yeah, that doesn't sound too dirty. If you don't throw him out, I will. Throw who out? You seem cross this morning, dearie. Walton has dismissed the servants. Walton's what? Fired the servants, all except Helen and the cook, and thrown all the liquor down the sink. What? Where's Kent? Fired. Watch me, I'll fix that bird. He's drunk, that's what he is. And yes, that's a young Betty Davis. Arliss insisted on casting her in the previous year's hit, The Man Who Played God and that convinced Jack Warner to sign her to a contract. So we basically have George to thank for helping her pave the way to stardom. And that was the terminally bland Hardy Albright with her as her brother. I wish they'd included a scene with Ford regular Jay Farrell McDonald as Arliss fishing buddy. He's great as always. <laughs> okay, this is a little silly. If you've never seen a George Arliss comedy, or any of his films, this is an especially fine one to start with. I'm surprised they reached back to The Millionaire and not a successful calamity, but maybe it wasn't as successful at the box office. Anyway, do give it a spin. Maybe we can restore him to his former glory, even if he was old enough to play Alexander Hamilton's grandfather. Grandfather. <laughs> 